All right, welcome back everyone to another one of our quick live sessions and I promise already right now that it's going to be a bit shorter than the last few times. So today what I really want to focus on is sort of reasonable priced ways to run marine research projects because the general opinion is that, well, especially the deeper you go, the more expensive things get. When we're talking about submarines or big ROVs, things get insanely expensive pretty quick, which is very true. And for everyone who has ever been on a research ship, you will probably know that running those runs somewhere in the five digit numbers on a daily basis, which is a bit more than most students can afford. But the good news is there's a lot of ways that you can actually run projects on a somewhat tighter budget. So since we are a small NGO, we have been using a couple of those. And in recent years, we had our focus on three different things that I want to really focus on today. So one of them we used a lot for the seagrass meadows, but it can also be used for lots of well general assessments for the marine environment. And I have been in touch with a couple of different NGOs now and also research centers actually that asked us about how exactly we did it. And one of those things is something I want to show you right now and it's actually well this right now is just google maps or google earth pro in that case and if you zoom in you'll see that the resolution on many things is um well questionable at best but the thing is you can with a tiny budget in comparison make something incredible out of it so this is the resolution we managed to get and basically you can zoom in quite a lot and Ultimately, you could actually see a small, well, not the small fish, but fish on it as well. And all it took to do that is this guy. So it's just a standard small drone. In this case, a DJI Mavic Pro that we're using. Original version, actually. So the very first one. And that in combination with a phone. Nothing more. And there is luckily software where you can actually uh basically pre-program a route so if you look at for example lychee is an app that works on every phone and it works well with pretty much any open source standard drone that you can get out there and you can pre-program your route and basically what it does it does take pictures every couple of seconds and those get bunched together into an overlay like the one you just saw now the program that we used to make this particular one was called a uh, precision mapper so that really worked with hundreds and hundreds of pictures and over the course of a year we collected a good 150,000 pictures covering about four square kilometers and this is basically the maps you get out of it so i'm just going to switch to the external screen again so basically what you have is uh, big kml files that you can then just drag and drop onto Google Earth and well that's the view you get and well you see on the outlines that it is kind of square so that's just the single pictures the only drawback on that one is that if you don't have enough differences in the pictures so for example on patches like this where it's just sand and very well single sided colors it can't really tell where one picture ends and where the other one starts which only yeah basically means that you won't get more detail in solid sand patches which is not really an issue if you want to map for example seagrass meadows or reefs i mean one of my favorites was this bay here which worked out pretty amazingly well and i mean on this you can see every single rock and every bit of detail which worked incredibly so the one that we switched to now uh, very recently is a different software which is called Hive Mapper. So that one basically means that you can, and I have to look for the right window, yeah. So Hive Mapper basically gives you the chance to just use pretty much every single video that you ever recorded on the drone and you can throw that into this software and that I have only been playing with right now or in the last couple of days and weeks so let me switch over 
So this is what it looks like. It's hivemapper.com. You can upload any video you like and then you can check out the actual map that it generates. And as I said, I just came across it now, so I didn't get a chance to do anything on the open ocean yet. I will try on the lake in the next couple of days and then come back with more feedback. But what that one does, it is actually creating a 3D screen out of things, which is pretty amazing for a simple video. And again, you can make your drone fly an automated sort of route. And this, for example, gives you all the details on the trees and the flat patches. And then, of course, the river next to it. River is always tricky because it has lots of reflections because there's always waves and stones and stuff. But that should, again, be a lot better once you are on, well, basically on normal water. So, that already was number one. So, a drone like this, by now you can get them secondhand. It will set you back about 500 euros, I think you can get them now, which is not bad. And you can easily go for the newer, better version already, which then is around a thousand bucks which is not exactly cheap, I do admit that, but it's also not on the super high um, end of things. Okay, um, just because Chris now asked about the map as well, so let me switch back again to the external screen here. Yeah, so this is one of the maps we created with the drone overlay with a couple of hundred pictures. So just for comparison, this bay all the way across is about 150 meters. And that's the kind of detail you get out of it. Whereas this is what Google Earth gives you as a standard. So pretty nice comparison, I think. Okay. Number two that we have been fiddling with in the last years. And we like it so much that we actually got three of them by now. Well, not entirely voluntary. It is such a popular tool that people keep stealing it from us. But one of my absolute favorites. And we just received our new one now. So this is it. It's an open ROV Trident. By now it's uh, produced by a company called Sofa Ocean. And basically it's that pocket version of an ROV. The incredible thing about it is it's oh, steerable with again a phone in theory in reality you might want to use a somewhat well something with screen and possibly external joysticks just because it makes the steering a lot easier and that thing worked like a charm in the last years and basically what we used it for mostly is for transect work for documenting invasive species. So again, I will switch back to the external screen and just show you a couple of the videos that we took with it. Um, so one of the first tries we did was this and we were looking for invasive species. So these are quite obviously lionfish that we found in Greece. And the beauty of an ROV versus a diver is quite simply it's quiet for one. In that case, it's pretty small as well. So it's not really scary for any fish. And as you can see in that video, we could literally bump into the fish. So they clearly do not give a rat's butt about it. And the other thing you can do with it quite easily is you can put in the overlays. So on this screen now you can see you got the date, the time, your heading so once you plug it in you want to make sure that it's actually pointing north which on a boat is fairly easy because you always have a compass somewhere nearby you see the water depth or the depth that the rov is at that given time plus the water temperature so it gives you a bunch of information right away and that means no matter where you are in the video you always know pretty much where you are so what we did is we of course started a collection as well of every single dive and we would pin down the gps coordinates of every single spot that we are in so that way you know exactly where you started the dive 
and then you have to kind of guesstimate where you are when you see something but because the cable is only a hundred meters and that's already the longer cable that we got with it it means you are always in the radius of a hundred meters from your starting point but this gives you an incredible overview of the things you see in the area and because the fish don't really react to it too much as you can see in the video here I mean the, even the, the little damsels they were just well sticking around really so that gives you an incredible overview and something you can work off in terms of doing estimates of what the fish stocks in the location really are and in one season we did a couple of hundred dives with this thing and so far it stands up brilliant the only thing you really have to take care of is that you really want to well rinse it off properly after you're done diving and make sure to have it sitting in fresh water for a while afterwards otherwise the props will seize up now that ROV is not super cheap it will set you back by I think the running price right now is 1600 US dollars though and actually you can use the code MANAYA on your order and you will get a 10% discount which is quite nice I reckon um, yeah so if you want to see more videos of those we have plenty more that we could show you right away but also if you check on our youtube channel you will see a couple of videos that we did specifically with the rov where you can see um basically what we saw how we run it how we use it we have quite a few of those from the rov and mostly because i like to well pull in as many people as possible an incredible tool that everybody has access to these days is just this everybody got a smartphone and we are working with a couple of NGOs that are focusing on marine mammals so that's well dolphins whales everything that you can basically see from the surface and also we are trying to pull in boaters to keep an eye on seagrass matters with us and for us and especially people who uh, sailing or who live on a sailboat and drop the anchor every now and then generally speaking you can see seagrass meadows from the surface which ultimately means that you can take a picture with your phone every modern smartphone has a GPS in it already so basically it means if you take a picture with your smartphone it already has GPS coordinates in it if you have it activated and that means if you for example take a picture of a dolphin that you see jumping next to your boat and you send it to us via email or via contact form on our website on www.projectmanaya.at we already know when and where you saw it and what it is and then we will distribute it to the relevant NGOs that might be in Montenegro, Albania, Greece and make sure that they can add all those things to their data collection as well and the same is true for well in our case it would be the seagrass meadows and the invasive species obviously very few people actually have their phone with them while they're diving but it doesn't stop you from well once you're back up on the boat or back at the dive center to just submit on the form and if you go to projectmanaya.at um, let me just do that quickly uh, and share the Excel screen okay so if you go to our website you can just go to menu projects invasive species for example and then you get a short overview of all the species that we're actually looking for and then also the submission form which right now this is for the invasive species uh, we do have another one for the seagrass which can then be found in projects Posidonia and yeah in terms of the invasive species there's also other NGOs like IC we're still talking to them and trying to get the forms to talk together so really we can all combine our findings rather than everybody cooking their own little pot of soup and ultimately I think everyone would benefit of sharing the data with each other um, okay 
sorry, just started reading the comments again now. Um, yeah, but ultimately everybody can just add their findings to a general collection of invasive species sightings, in particular in our case. Also the seagrass is a key information for us since we are trying to get as many people as possible to pull in there and also we are trying to get the dive centers then to go to the spots. Obviously right now not a lot of diving is happening, in fact close to no diving is happening at all because of the current situation which also still is keeping us sort of stuck in Austria and I have actually been talking to lots of people in different fields in the marine field but from different areas in the marine field in the last couple of days and we decided to do another short one of these YouTube live sessions next week on Friday most likely and talk a little bit more about the whole corona issue and how that is impacting not only marine science but also the sailing community and also the whole evolution of how climate things are going because there's lots of good news around but the bottom line is some of it might just backfire quite a bit and of course if you want to hear more about the methods that we're using i really just wanted to focus real quick real brief on the three main ones that we have been using in the last years but if you want to know in more detail about anything feel free to ask or definitely also check our youtube channel because especially on the drone mapping, we do have designated videos of how exactly we did all of this step by step. And you can find all the information with all the links to the relevant software and all of this in videos already on our YouTube channel. And the same is very true for all the drone footage, uh, for the whole ROV footage. And for more information, just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to answer all of it. And of course, talk more about it in another live session. And other than that, I think for today, I promise to keep it short. It's been 20 minutes already. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And I really hope I'll see you again next time. Okay, bye guys.